Tenuru's approach against disability progression in multiple sclerosis is based on neutralizing the pathogenic envelope protein of the HERFW family, abbreviated PHERFWR. This protein is present in the brain of MS patients, and there is very strong evidence showing that it may fuel core mechanisms leading to the buildup of disability over time. But first of all, let's look at what is multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a chronic neurodegenerative disease which is made of at least two concomitant pathophysiological processes which have different relative bearings on the patient's condition over time. On the one hand, there is an acute inflammatory process which characterizes the early stages of multiple sclerosis in over 80% of patients. It is called the remitting relapsing phase of the disease. Acute inflammation, represented in this diagram by the orange peaks, is mediated by adaptive immunity as B and T lymphocytes penetrate the brain and form edemas that may lead to clinical symptoms called relapses. The symptoms suffered by the patient depend on the site of the edema in the brain and of its consequences on the body. Typically, an edema along the optical nerve will hamper the patient's vision. But thankfully, this edema will resolve and the relapse will be followed by a remission with a full or partial recovery of all the symptoms incurred during the relapse. That is the inflammatory component of MS. On the other hand, multiple sclerosis is also a neurodegenerative process which is characterized by accelerated brain atrophy, impairment of myelin integrity and axonal damage leading to neuronal death. This process is thought to be the key in the progression of disability over time. It starts from the very early stages of the disease, but becomes more acute at the later stages as the permanent damage to the brain accumulates and inflammatory activity diminishes. This is called the secondary progressive phase of the disease. There are also patients that experience few or no relapses but suffer disability progression from the start of the disease, a phenomenon called primary progressive MS. The combination of this inflammation and neurodegeneration phenomena, which different relative weights at different points in time, are the characteristics of MS. But as we will see, we have very different tools to respond to its inflammatory versus its neurodegenerative components today. There are today over 15 drugs approved for multiple sclerosis, almost all acting on the inflammatory aspects of MS. These drugs provide highly effective options to tackle inflammation, reduce the number of acute inflammatory edema in the brain, and thus reduce or even suppress relapses. The first drugs against inflammation, the ABCRs for Avonex, Betafiron, Copaxone, and Rebif, were introduced 15 to 20 years ago. They reduce the number and intensity of relapses and are still used for patients with lower inflammatory activity. In the last 10 years, a number of powerful immunosuppressive drugs, orals and injectables, have been approved for MS and provide a highly effective control of inflammation and relapses. Today, a neurologist has a wide choice of compounds available to tailor the treatment of the inflammation component of MS based on the profile and level of inflammation activity of his or her patient. Thanks to the innovation and efforts of the industry, we now have a very good control on relapses. But unfortunately, this is not enough. Treatment with anti-inflammatory agents for the last 20 years has demonstrated that the neurodegeneration process is largely independent from the inflammatory component of MS. Treating patients effectively against inflammation and relapses does not stop the long-term disability progression of the disease, which is driven by neurodegeneration. Even if treated successfully against inflammation and relapses, the vast majority of MS patients will see their disability increase over time and 80% of patients in the remitting relapsing phase will enter the secondary progressive phase of the disease. This is why the MS community 
and the regulatory agencies are now focused on finding solutions which are specific to neurodegeneration, which can also be defined as fighting disability progression independent of relapse activity. Treating this progression is the major unmet medical need in MS at the frontier for drug development in this indication. When we look at the cellular components of MS, there are at least three families of cells involved in the damage to the brain. First, relapses are closely tied to the activity of B and T cells penetrating the brain and forming edemas. In most cases, this damage is transitory and relapses are followed with remission. Almost all the drugs available for MS today target these B and T cells, either lowering their activity, preventing them from entering the brain, or even destroying some of those immune system cells. As a result, we have reached high levels of efficacy in reducing the number of relapses by preventing the acute inflammatory episodes that cause them. Yet long-term disability progression is not stopped by anti-inflammatory drugs targeting B and T cells. Neurodegeneration appears to be mainly fueled by other cells, the cells naturally resonant in the brain, cells which, in health, should be repairing myelin and protecting neurons. The brain has a very effective mechanism for repairing myelin, with cells called oligodendrocyte precursor cells, or OPCs. OPCs may be compared to myelin stem cells. When there is an insult to a myelin sheet, OPCs migrate to the side of the problem and differentiate into new myelin to protect the axon. But this process is hampered in MS patients, where OPCs can be found on the lesions but often fail to differentiate. This is probably why, from the early stages of the disease, a decrease in myelin density can be observed by MRI in MS patients compared to healthy volunteers, a gap that will become wider and wider as the disease progresses over time. Another family of brain resident cells that I believe to play a key role in the buildup of disability over time are microglia and macrophages, which constitute the organ's first line of defense. For unknown reasons, these cells, whose primary function is to clean up and protect neurons, attack the myelin sheet protecting the axons. After myelin is damaged, if not repaired, axons falter, and the process ultimately results in neuronal loss. These attacks are not acute inflammatory lesions. They are characterized by slower chronic lesions that develop over time it will create permanent damage in the brain of the patients. The accumulation of this permanent damage is believed to be the main driver of progression of disability in MS. The pathogenic envelope protein of the HERFW family, abbreviated PHERFW-ALF, was the first HERF protein discovered isolated from biopsies post-mortem of MS patients. Since then, there have been many studies in Europe and the US confirming that this protein is consistently found in the brain of MS patients. It is very specific to MS and it is not found in the brain samples from patients that had Alzheimer's, Parkinson's or stroke, nor in people diseased from a car accident unless they had MS. This pathogenic protein has been found from the earliest to the late stages of disease and is predominantly found or microglial monocytic cells in the MS brain belonging to the innate immune system. There is today a very strong evidence that this pathogenic protein may play a core role in the mechanisms that drive the progression of disability in multiple sclerosis. The PHRFWOF protein has been shown to play a role in disrupting the myelin repair process and also in activating microglial cells into aggressive phenotypes attacking myelin. This protein is able to activate TLR4 receptors, which are part of innate immunity, with two direct consequences on brain cells. 
On the one hand, it interacts with the TLR4 receptors that are transiently expressed on OPCs, and that interaction stops their maturation. This pathogenic protein, present in all brain lesions, may explain why OPCs fail to differentiate and repair damaged myelin in the brain of MS patients. But in addition to its effect on OPCs, this pathogenic protein also interacts with the TLR4 receptors on the brain's microglial cells. It activates them, turns them into aggressive phenotypes that wrap around axons and damage myelin. Failure to remyelinate and damage from activated microglia are two processes which are key to the buildup of the permanent damage leading to disability progression in MS. Jinro has developed and is testing an antibody that neutralizes this protein in the brain of MS patients. Femelimab is a monoclonal antibody developed specifically to neutralize the PHRFW envelope protein and to stop its interaction with both OPCs and macroglia. By neutralizing this pathogenic protein, which is present in the brain of MS patients, it aims to block two of the mechanisms that fuel neurodegeneration and the buildup of disability. As such, it is the first approach against the possible direct cause of multiple sclerosis, and it has shown very promising results in clinical tests so far, as will be shown in our next video.